The NHL has suspended Predators forward Philip Forsberg for three games. So in today's video, I want to discuss that suspension and take a look at how the NHL seems to be inconsistent on their suspension calls lately. And that's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the Rangers-Predators game this Saturday was a chippy affair to say the least. Now if you haven't seen the hit that we're going to discuss here for, on Philip Forsberg hitting Rangers forward Jimmy VC, the link is in the description down below. Obviously we can't show the footage here due to possible copyright claims. But certainly check it out in the description if you haven't seen the hit. You can certainly watch that before you finish watching this video so you can see what we're talking about here. So this game got uh, quite chippy. Before this play ever happened with Forsberg, there was another hit that was questionable that Rangers fans weren't happy about as well. Uh, Predators defenseman Alexi Yemelin uh, absolutely crunched uh, Ranger defenseman Mark Stahl into the boards. And there was... Uh, there was a lot of fans were not happy with that and were calling for suspensions or other forms of discipline on uh, Emelin and that hasn't gone down. Not long after that Emelin hit on Stahl, we had the Forsberg hit on Rangers forward Jimmy VC. Um, after you watch the play here, you'll see that Forsberg was coming around the net. He kind of got himself skating backwards and he hit VC. He did not leave his feet and he basically, uh, the problem is, is that his elbow ended up making contact with VC's face. You can see after the VC was bleeding from his mouth, um, so obviously that contact was what resulted in the suspension. So there was an injury on the play, um, but the fact that he was given three games, if you look at this guy's history, he's, he's not known as a dirty player. He doesn't have any suspension history or fine history that I could find. I, I did some searching. I could not find anything on Philip Forsberg's past. Um, so he's a first time offender, not a repeat offender, and he gets three games. Now, Mike Fisher, who has recently announced he's returning to the Predators, had a quote on Twitter saying that he thought that this suspension call was an absolute joke. And you know what? I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with him here. I don't know if uh, Rangers fans are going to be too happy with my opinion, but the fact of the matter is, you can say what you want. It, in worst case scenario, this was a penalty. Um, I don't think any form of supplementary discipline here is required or necessary. Um, you know, and if the NHL really felt that there was, I could see maybe a fine. We've seen some other uh, situations lately where players have been fined. But the fact of the matter is, this is not that bad of a situation compared to some other things that we've seen lately where there was no call made and no suspension made. So the NHL needs to get its act together here and be more consistent with its calls when it comes to suspensions and even the penalties on the ice. Now, I understand when it comes to the referees that, you know, it's a fast game, you can miss things and you can't use video review to call a penalty. I get all that, so I don't wanna put this all on the referees, but the fact is that the people making the decisions uh, for the suspensions and NHL player safety, they have plenty of time. They can review the play from all kinds of different angles. They can take as much time as they need. They can have a hearing with the player to get their side of the story. There's all kinds of information at their fingertips without having to feel the pressure of making a split second call so they can get things right. And they haven't been doing a very good job of that lately, in my opinion. This Forsberg call is way too harsh. Three games for a player with no history uh, for that type of play, not called for. But we've seen other scenarios not too long ago. We've seen a case of Radko Gudis of the Flyers when they were playing New Jersey just a few days ago. He left his feet and hit, I think it was, uh, I believe, for the forward uh, for the Devils was Paul Mieri. Uh, he left his feet and, and got him right in the face. You know, that, that, and Gudis has a history, like a bad history of suspensions. Like he's a, right up there with Brad Marchand for as far as how many times they've been suspended, how many games they've lost, and that type of thing. So, I mean, like, really, like, there's nothing done about that. Gudis is not suspended, but yet you get a first time offender in Philip Forsberg given three games. Now, as far as the hit earlier from uh, Emelin on Mark Stahl, it's really a, a you know, that, that was not a suspension worthy hit either, in my opinion. Um, it's unfortunate the way Stahl got hit. It looks as though Stahl does have a concussion, um, and it's hard to say how long he's going to be out. I really feel bad for Mark Stahl. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate circumstance, the result of that hit. I haven't typically been an overly big fan of Emlyn over the years. I think there has been times 
in the past where he's had dirty hits. Uh, I'm not sure this one really falls into that category either. Um, obviously, the NHL player safety didn't feel that was suspendable, um, but I am surprised at that done nothing. Really, if you look at it, you could probably argue the, the Emlin hit was probably worse for wear on Stahl than the one on Forsberg where they laid out the suspension. So the, the consistency here needs to get better. It's all over the place. It's just as bad as goalie interference. Nobody seems to understand or know what anything is. You can't look at a play anymore and be like, oh yeah, it's this, it's that. There, there's none of that anymore. Like nobody seems to know. So I know they've had some changes in the Department of Player Safety for who's making the decisions. And so far this year, I, th I think it's for the most part, it's pretty crazy and inconsistent. I mean, if you look at the most recent suspension, uh, you know, more than one or two games was Brad Marchand given a five game suspension for that elbow um, against Marcus Johansson. And this is three games. So Marchand has a severe history of several suspensions and all kinds of games lost in his career and a, a reputation of, of having bad hits. So he gets five games. And then you get a player like Forsberg with a completely clean history, and this hit is nowhere near as severe as some of the other ones we've seen. He's given three. So you think it's that close to the Marchand situation? Doesn't make any sense to me. I totally disagree with this with this suspension. But I want to know what do you think? Do you think Forsberg was warranted given any kind of suspension at all? And I want to know what your thoughts are on this play. Is it suspendable? Is it just a penalty? Should it be a fine? What are your thoughts? Do you agree the NHL seems to be inconsistent here? There's a lot of calls lately that haven't been uh, suspended. We talked about one here not too long ago with Colton uh, uh, Pareko, St. Louis. Uh, when he hit Paul Byron, shoved him into the boards, that turned out, I, I thought it might be a suspension. And, you know, Pareko's got a clean history too. And I could understand that it wasn't going to be a lot. I thought maybe a fine, maybe one game. I didn't think it was going to be a whole lot, but we discussed that. There's quite a few viewers that uh, agreed with me that there should be something, um, and nothing came from it. But yet now this one there is. And then they had the Gudas situation. If you haven't seen the Radko Gudas hit that I'm talking about, I'll put a link to that down below as well. So you can look at the two, and you, can, you, know, you can't tell me that the uh, Forsberg situation was worse than Gudis. Like, there's just no way. But yet, you know, three games for a player with no history and nothing for a player with um, a bad history of several suspensions. Makes absolutely no sense. But I want to know what you think. Do you agree with me? Or do you think that the NHL got this right? Do you, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on the suspension? Leave some comments down below so we can discuss. Don't forget as well to follow us on Twitter. You're going to see a link to our Twitter account right here. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, and all those links are in the description down below as well. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.